everyone has their own opinions and takes of a game, especially an online game where it can be in a competitive setting. Much like Apex, they have their own opinions, and so does For Honor. For Honor community and the player base has their own opinions about a great deal of things in this game, from what is balanced to what the devs should do. And then some people, they're more worried about a bikini outfit for Shigoki, but I can't complain about that either. However, we all have our own opinions of this game, and I got some, and some are considered unpopular, or some are even considered hot takes. So here are some of my For Honor hot takes that are bound to get Reddit and TikTok riled up. Let's get into it. Let's start out with the juicy one being Pirate. Pirate is weak. You heard me right. She is weak or not as strong as people make her out to be. I'm looking at you, Reddit and TikTok. Her dodge recoveries were nerfed into the ground. If she chooses to do a gunshot, you can light her out of her unblockable. Her dodge attack can't be delayed. I don't understand how people say they would rather fight an Orochi or a Shinobi or an Afira over a pirate in a team fight. If I see a pirate in a team fight, I think GG easy. What's she going to do? She's been nerfed into the ground. Her damage has been nerfed into the ground. Her gunshot has been nerfed into the ground. Her ganks are nerfed. Don't get me wrong. She still has the unblockable. That can be oppressive, but she is not as strong as people make her out to be. And the people that say she is overpowered or too strong just struggle fighting her. And that's the honest truth. She is not that strong. <laughs> I hardly ever struggle against pirate. Now, old pirate can be understandable as she was very oppressive. However, this current pirate that we have, she's weak. She's not strong as a fear or shinobi but that is a high tier however she's not as strong as people make her out to be number two the game is in the best state it's been in a long time now a might be running around and causing her own set of issues but if we look at the game as a whole and the core concepts the game is in a pretty good spot compared to what it was in years ago a lot of these newer players say hey they're reacting to this they're reacting to that or damage too high yes there is that small percentage but most of these complaints are normally exaggerated. However, compared to what we used to have where option selects were in the game to where you still couldn't attack, the CCU has done its job for the better or the worse. The game is in a good state, besides some small, glaring issues. When people say they want For Honor back, you don't want For Honor, old For Honor back because of the mechanics. You want old For Honor back because of the nostalgia. And I know that cuts deep to the core, but old for honor was a shit show it was a buggy mess it was unbalanced however current for honor still has its issues but compared to old for honor this is the best state it has been in a long time here's one that's going to get a lot of people upset or russell's and jimmy's mainly dual players duels do not matter compared to a 4v4 in terms of the game mode because at the end of the day duels are just seeing who has the better reactions whereas 4v4 takes more skill than duels because in a 4v4 game mode, you have to monitor your surroundings more, be more aware of your teammates, peel, heal, peel here, peel there, survive this anti-gank, team fight this. You have to worry a lot more in a 4v4 and micromanage more than a duel. While as in a duel setting, you're just staring at each other, and 9 times out of 10, the better reaction wins. Whereas in 4v4, <laughs> so much chaos is going on. To me, if I look at a 4v4 game mode compared to a duel, I think the person in 4v4 is going to have more skill just because of all of the tasks they are micromanaging. If you ever put an eye tracker on somebody who's playing a top level 4v4 or in a comp setting, look at where their eyes dart all over the screen. Look at how much they have to manage all the communication. You do not have any of that in a dual setting. Because at the end of the day, in the dual setting, you're just staring at each other and hoping to God your enemy doesn't have better reactions than you. Here's another one. A majority of the cast is more viable. Let's exclude outliers such as Nuxia, current Yorm, some people even say Warden. Characters like them. They're they're outliers. But let's look at the rest of the cast and the buffs they've gotten over the years. They're more viable. And if we look at the definition of viable, it is capable of working successfully or feasibly. Now, Griffin got his nerfs, but Griffin is viable, and he can still be used. You can perform successfully. The whole point of a character being viable is to where they can at least be used. Back in the day, you didn't even bother touching a trash, a trash character. You didn't even bother with that. You played meta. 
A prime example is Shaolin. You did not see that many Shaolins until now. Why? Because he got his rework and he was made viable. He can be used. There are some that outperform him, but the point is he can still be used successfully compared to what he used to be. And in terms of balance for the cast, it's in a decent state right now, like I said, excluding outliers such as Afira with her high damage bash, Nuxia, Yorm, characters like them. They're outliers, but overall, a good chunk of the cast is viable and you can use them successfully in 4v4. This one goes out to the Breach players or those that like to dip and rage quit. Rip does not equate to skill. Much like how in Call of Duty, if there was a Prestige Master, it was 50-50 whether or not he was an absolute god or absolute trash. Much like in this game, just because you see somebody who's rep 500, 700, or over 1000 like myself, that doesn't mean we are just gods amongst men like Black Goku just coming in and wrecking shit. There are rep 1000s out there that are horrible, and there are rep 20s out there that are gods amongst men that will just make you kneel before their glorious peen that they have. It's just something that kills me as people will leave when they see a high rep. It's like, why? Why would you leave? You don't know if this person is good or bad. And if they are good, stay and fight. You will actually learn something. I don't know why people leave. And I can understand if somebody has a 9 to 5 or they come off a really stressful day at work and they don't want to deal with it. But at the end of the day, that rep is just a bunch of digital numbers. And that is something people need to get out of their head as it's mainly an issue in Breach where people just leave because they see the rep or they leave just after one fight. That number does not mean they're they're gods. You can still beat them. Like, ugh. People think just because somebody has a high rep or a high level, they're untouchable. Nobody's untouchable. Anybody can lose. Your best top-tier content creators, your top-tier players, like... Blitz, Clutchmeister, they can still lose because at the end of the day, we're human. There is a human behind that screen, and that screen is just pixels and numbers. Just because that number is 1,000 or 700, that doesn't mean you're fighting fucking Goku for crying out loud. This one here is mainly going to get the dual community upset, the For Honor rants community, or those that just don't like being ganked upset. Ganking does take some form of skill. And the reason why I say this is because not everybody can do a gank correctly. There is a lot that goes into it, such as positioning, feats, perks, your environment. There's a lot that goes into it and a lot of practice. Now, if somebody's stuck in a 100-0, I completely understand that. Those shouldn't be in the game. A prime one that me and Ensuing Carnage do a lot is a Magi grab into a Roshi Storm Rush. There is nothing they can do, and I understand that that is shitty. Something like that should not be in the game. But for your average, your average ganks, whereas you GB for this, you like confirm for that, that does take a sort of skill, because at the end of the day, you have to take that extra step to learn that knowledge, to watch these videos, and to understand how the game works on a deeper level. Because if you mess up, the opponent can get revenge. And if I see somebody 100 0 gank my teammate or gank them enough to where they're at two bars of health like your average bash heavy gank immediately in the back of my head i think okay this guy must at least somewhat know what he's doing or have an understanding of the game because not everybody can do that this one is a touchy one for a lot of people you're human you're not perfect a lot of people, for some reason, like to have an ego in this game. They let it get the better of them. They think, oh, they should be this, they should be that. Oh, I'm on PC, I should be the best ever. Oh, I'm on console, I'm just trash, I'm never going to win. Those are excuses, and they only satisfy those who make them. It was a quote up on my, late, my weightlifting wall at my high school. I don't remember who it was from. But excuses only satisfy those who make them, and you need to remain accountable. You need to look at your mistakes and take a step back and see what caused you to, or in that scenario, lose. What did you do that led to your death or led to this particular outcome in the game? Because people will get an ego, they'll get their head inflated, and they won't improve, they'll remain stagnant at the game. And that's unfortunate, but it is also a very difficult thing to deal with and to understand as I do it sometimes. I'll get very angry, I'll make excuses, but at the end of the day, the reason why I die in that scenario in the game is because of my own fault. Outside of a bug issue or a glitch issue, at the end of the day, my mistakes are my own. 
and that is it. I made the mistake. There's nothing I can do about it. I need to look at that mistake and learn from it. And that is just something people don't do in this game. I guarantee you, if you look at your mistakes, take a step back, understand them, and remain accountable for your actions, you will improve as a player. All right. Hope you all enjoyed. This one was a little bit more off script. People requested some off script videos to where I don't even use a script. I just talk. And that's what this is. I hope all y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to follow to become a CEO baby. And subscribe to become a CEO baby. Don't forget to check out my Twitch. TwitchTV.com slash X1844. I try to stream around midnight EST on my days off. So let me know if y'all like this type of video. I appreciate all the support recently on my past videos. As we've been growing, we've been getting new people. And I'm hyped. And we are also close to Twitch affiliate. Once we get that going, ooh, we're probably going to skyrocket. And I'm just... I'm overall extremely excited for it as I feel like it's taken the next step in furthering my my main goal as I would eventually like to do this full time and stream and play games full time. I love my job that I have right now. However, the step above that would be to be able to stream full time as I love this game at the end of the day. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe to become a steel baby and I'll see y'all in the next one.